every conservation law has, well, the, the, thing, the next thing I would like to talk about is the relationship of conservation laws to symmetry laws. It is, we last time talked about conservation principles, conservation of energy, of momentum, angular momentum, and so on. Now we're talking about symmetry laws. It's extremely interesting that there seems to be a deep connection between the conservation laws and the symmetry laws. This connection has its proper interpretation, at least as we understand it today, only in the knowledge of quantum mechanics. Nevertheless, I will show you the following, that if, I will show, try to explain the following, that if we will assume that the laws of physics are describable by a minimum principle, that the paths so are taken so that some quantity is least, an uh, idea I described once before, if we add the, that the laws of nature come from a minimum principle, then we can show that if the law is such that you can move all the thing equipment to one side, in other words, if it's translatable in space, then there must be conservation of momentum. That there's a deep connection between the symmetry principles and the conservation laws, but that that connection requires that the minimum principle be assumed. You remember last, at one time, we discussed the one way of describing physical laws by saying that a particle goes from one place to another in a given length of time by trying different paths, and the actual path taken has this property, that there's a certain quantity, which unfortunately happens to be called the action, which does not to be taken to signify anything because it's got nothing to do with action. Anyway, there's a certain quantity called the action, which you calculate on this path. And if you will calculate it for any other path, the answer is bigger. It's least for the real path. And that one way of describing the laws of nature is to say that the action a certain mathematical quantity is least for the actual path than for any other path. Now, another way of saying the thing is least is to say this, that if you move the path a little bit, at first it doesn't make any difference. Suppose you were walking around in a wood, in a, on mountains, on hills, but smooth hills, please. Smooth. The mathematical things that were involved here correspond to smooth hills walking around on hills and valleys, and we come to a place where we're lowest. Then I say, if you take a small step forward, you won't make change your height. When you're at the lowest, or at the highest point, a step doesn't make any difference in the altitude and first approximation. Whereas if you're on a slope, you can walk down the slope with a step. And then if you take the step in the opposite direction, you walk up. And that's the key to the reason why when you're at the lowest place, taking a step doesn't make much difference because if you did make any difference, if you took the step in the opposite direction, you'd go down. I mean, if it went up one way, it would go down the other way. But since this is the lowest point and it can't go down, in first approximation, the step doesn't make any difference. So we can, we therefore know that if we move this path a little bit, in first approximation, it doesn't make any difference to the action. Now I want you to consider the following possible other path. First, we jump immediately over to another place here nearby. Then, we go along... This sticks out too far to make the diagram clear, so if you'll permit me to just change the shape of the path. Then, we move on exactly the corresponding path to another point here, which has displaced the same amount, of course, because it's the corresponding path to this side. Now, we have just discovered that the laws of nature are such that the action, the total amount of action going on this path is the same in first approximation to that path. That's from the minimum principle, when it's the real motion. Now I show you something else, that the action on this path is the same as the action from this little cross to that little cross if the world is the same when you move everything over. Because the difference of these two is only that you moved everything over. So if the symmetry principle of translation in space is right, if that's right, then the a total action between the crosses is the same as between the dots. But for the true motion, the total action on this cockeyed path here is about, is very closely the same as for the original one. So subtracting equals from equals and so on and so on. Anyway, you can probably see, therefore, that the contribution from this little section and from this little section are equal. But in working this little motion we're going this way and making this one we're going the other way so if we make a new the contribution of this 
taken as the effect of moving that way. And the contribution of this, thinking of it as an effect of moving that way, but taking it the other sign, because it's the other way. We see that, the, that there is a quantity here which has to match the quantity here to cancel out, which is the effect on the action of a little tiny step to the x, in the x direction. So there is that quantity, the effect on the action of a small step in the x direction is the same at the beginning as at the end. There is a quantity, therefore, that doesn't change as time goes on, provided principle, minimum principle works and symmetry principle of displacement in space is right. And this quantity which doesn't change is in fact exactly the momentum that we, the momentum we discussed last time. A corresponding argument for the displacement in time, the delay in time, comes out as the conservation of energy. The case that we can, if we rotate in space doesn't make any difference, comes out as the conservation of angular momentum and so on. That we can reflect it and it makes no difference doesn't come out to be anything simple in the classical sense and it hasn't therefore got a simple classical interpretation and people have called it the parity and they have a conservation law called the conservation of parity but those are just complicated words uh, in the case of the quantum mechanics. So all we're saying is that the right and left symmetry law is not valid but I have to mention that conservation of parity because you may have read in the papers the law of conservation of parity has been proved wrong. It should have been written because it's much easier to understand. The principle that you can't distinguish right and left has been proved wrong. <laughs>